Hey guys, welcome to your YouTube channel where we talk all about the GATE exam and the GATE exam is almost there. Yeah, hardly 45 to 50 days to go for the GATE computer science. February 13th, 2021 is the date, right? Two sessions are going to be and this is almost the end of December. High time for what? For the revision. And the revision has to be like few days you can make the detailed revision but ultimately when it will be like half of the January will be gone and you will be reaching to the February you need to have a quick revision thing that you can quickly revise a subject like in half an hour or in one hour so for that matter you need a quicker a quick revision notebook which will have three to four pages for each subject yes you got me right three to four pages for each subject that makes up that the entire computer science sits in that quick revision notebook and for each subject, unit wise, you will just mention the important, whatever are the concepts, the name of it, name of it. You need not to put the definitions. Yeah, you can put the formulas, you can put some very tricky question also, which you probably sometimes you just forget every time. Maybe sometimes it happens. Some concepts are really hard to remember. So you need to see it again and again. If that is so, you can just put that question also. But don't try to put definitions, put pointers. And those pointers, of the concept names and the formulas and the you know uh, the important logics should be able to make you visualize it starts and I mean it opens and you can see the entire picture okay fine yeah this thing had this if I say CPU scheduling okay this algorithm this algorithm this algorithm this algorithm right it should be like that in your mind and that should be your that should be the style of revision for that matter we have come up with a quick revision video series we are going to try to cover up each and every subject as much as possible. So we are beginning with the operating system. If you look at the previous papers, the operating system weightage in the gate exam goes somewhere from 6 to 12 marks. So on an average, we can say 8 to 10 mark questions are expected to be there. So again, an important subject to be covered up and the important part is this operating system uh, connects many concepts from the computer organization. So once you are through with it, it's easier to revise computer organization. So what you can do is you can sit with a new notebook. You can just make the subject name, start writing the con concept names from your original notebook, wherever you have your operating system notes. From that, you can just mention down the points and for each unit, we're going to solve we are, I'm going to give you the summary of the, uh, the unit, what all we have to study in this and we will solve the very important and good tricky questions which have been asked in the previous year. So that will allow you to implement what you have learned so far immediately in the question. So I think this will be the best way to make a revision for a subject. So let's start with the first unit of the operating system, which is very small introduction and of the introduction and the background part of the operating system. Basically, nothing much to revise there. You need to know the, what the what operating system is. Yeah, it's an interface between user and the hardware that we all know, and the all the other uh, responsibility an operating system has. It has its interface to interact with the user that could be that is known as command line interpreter, right? It could be in the text user interface form, it could be in the graphical user interface form. These all things are important to know for you, just as a brief and introduction part, right? After that, uh, the important thing to understand which comes in the computer architecture also is von Neumann architecture, that the computer systems we are working on are based upon the von Neumann architecture, which simply says that the CPU has the control unit and arithmetic logic unit, which interacts directly with the primary memory and all the secondary memory comes in the input output devices form, correct? To be very precise, the von Neumann architecture is also known as stored program concept, which makes up the entire part of execution of the process, that for anything to be executed, it has to be stored first in the primary memory, because what is directly accessible from your control unit and ALU is primary memory, that is main memory, that is your RAM right not your secondary storage so if at all any program or any process is ready to be executed first it has to be placed in your main memory so that is why the von Neumann architecture i have just mentioned here that you need to be very sure that the stored program concept is something over which our computers are working correct second uh, in the types of operating system 
uh, so many types are there definitely but what is important from us uh, from our point of view i have just taken that the uniprogrammed versus the multiprogrammed operating system i have just taken the diagrams of them for your quick understanding in the uniprogram operating system as i just now told the stored program concept we are coming fetching from the volume architecture so no matter whatever number of processes are ready to be executed on the cpu they are sitting in the disk on the secondary storage we can bring in just one process at a time because this is uni program operating system which says in the main memory the capability for the uh, operating system to handle a process is just one uni program it can handle just one process in the main memory at a time now suppose if at all this process p1 goes for the cpu execution it runs here and it needs some input output device to execute it comes down to this place and at this moment of time your cpu is free it it is free it can execute any instruction provided it is available with but it is not available with any other process the process one is busy with input output devices so what happens here the cpu is idle and that is the reason the uni program has a drawback of poor cpu utilization which was improvised by coming and moving to the multi program operating system correct where we again have multiple process ready and we have the capability to pull them down in the main memory in different different sections right we could allocate different memory allocations memory locations to each process so we have multiple process sitting in the main memory due to the stored program concept because we have multiple process now if process p1 is running on cpu we can have process p2 running on input output and if this goes for the input output we can schedule or we can assign another process to the cpu that makes the cpu utilization better the throughput becomes better and the efficiency comes out to be good correct so that was your multi programmed operating system yeah i kind of explained also and the multi program operating system could be further categorized as non preemptive multi program and preemptive multi program why i am mentioning again and again because these are important from the exam point of view the non preemptive is nothing but then once you have schedule a process to the cpu it cannot be taken back unless it terminates by itself or it goes for the input output device nobody can forcefully snatch the cpu control from the process that's the non preemptive in the preemptive the scheduling algorithms are going to be like this that they can if some another process with priority comes up in the list of main memory or in the list of ready queue then the existing process can be preempted forcefully we can take back the cpu control from the process and assign to the another process that is the preemption so that's what is important here in terms of uni program multi program operating system this you need to keep in your mind i'm going to come up quickly with one or two previous year question uh, the question was asked in the gate 2006 it uh, they were it and computer science separate papers for 3 4 years the question is simply asking from multi program preemptive non preemptive environment the process state transition diagram of an operating system is given below so here is your process state transition diagram that how a process when gets created gets into the ready state then go to the running then termination then go to the blocking correct so that is here so we started the start state uh, create a new process a new process created put into the ready queue process is scheduled put into the running state the process is terminated get exit come to the terminated state the process is waiting for the input output or some resource gets blocked come into the block state the process whose input output is complete or the resource is released come back to the ready state so this is the process state transition diagram given for a particular operating system and then the question follows which of the following must be false important why i have put it into red because most of the people assume it to be true and go for the wrong answer because it is a very simple question so which of the following must be false about the above operating system so the given operating system and its its uh, classification its type its nature is described by this std this is state transition diagram so you need to understand what type of operating system this is and 
your helping outputs are here. So the option A say that it is a multi-program operating system. Is it false or true? The question is asking the false statement. So is it multi-program operating system? True or not? True. Definitely. This is multi-program operating system because when we are creating a process, we are putting into the ready queue. We are not directly putting into the running. So that means we can create multiple process and put into the ready queue or in the ready state. So which is state that number of process are possible to be present in the main memory, which is the which is the identification of being a multi-program operating system. So this statement is true. Right? It uses preemptive scheduling. Preemptive, just now I told you, preemptive means forcefully taking back the CPU whenever you want. Which states, if it was preemptive scheduling, you should have a edge from running to ready. That means, whenever you want to preempt, you can take back the process to the ready state and you can schedule a new one. So, this edge should have been there in order for this to be preemptive scheduling but this edge is not present if this is not present that means it is not preemptive scheduling which means this statement is false correct correct now once this becomes false it uses non preemptive scheduling yes true it is using non preemptive because whenever a process is been scheduled either it is terminating or it is coming for input output so both the activities are done by a process with a will so there is no preemption so this is showing that it is a non preemptive scheduling so it is true it is a multi user operating system this is statement is the main reason for me to include this uh, question right here because many students get confused in this multi user see the preemption non preemption really does not have to do with anything with a multi user or single user single user multi user again doesn't have to do with the multi programming operating system and multi programming operating system could be single user as well as multi user single users multi user simply means that a single user access will be provided and multi user means a multiple user access can be provided you can create multiple users of your computer system you can provide the access to the multiple users who can have their own set of uh, instructions they can have their own set of programs in your computer system memory so that simply is a so yes it is a multi user system definitely i mean we have no way to say that it is not okay so when the three statements are true what becomes your answer option b becomes your answer because what is it asking the false statement so b is the false statement and so this is the answer i'll quickly come up with the next video with few more questions which are based upon the multi program operating system concept